Hi everyone, Mary at Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. Welcome. Today we're going to do more Mamagami as I've been. If you know me, you know when I find something I like to explore it fully or as fully as I can as a novice and um, see what I can do with it. <clears throat> so I've been exploring Mamagami now for a few weeks I guess and I've come up with several things I would like to do with it and um, I've moved on to magazines from the tactile, more tactile Mamagami, which where when you need the paper it actually becomes, feels like cotton. The magazine doesn't quite do that when you glue it down, but I'll explain that in a minute. So I have a video yesterday where I showed how I assembled this. I don't normally do videos where people have to buy or need special equipment because I prefer to um, just let people be creative and use what they have. So, all that being said, I'm going to show what I've come up with for the magazine technique. And I'm going to put this up here closer for you to see and what we're going to do today. And then explain what we need. I hope there is a little shadow here today. This is a little early and it's the time of year when the sun is coming through the window, but still low, so there's nothing I can, I do have a blind, but it's not blocking the sunlight completely. So today is the Mamagami tiles, charms, and I've done a whole bunch here. You can get 12 out of um, the size I'm going to make today. And as you'll see, you can get all kinds of organic forms, colors, shapes, etc. Okay, so what you'll need You'll need some glue. Today I'm going to use both glue stick and liquid glue. You'll need a base paper. For the flowers today, for these ones I used book pages, but today I'm going to use coffee dye paper. So you'll need a, a thinner base for the flowers and you'll need a thicker base for the charms. I'm using um, old watercolor. The You might remember I went back through old sketchbooks, cut them up into usable sizes and that's what I'm using. You'll need your Mamagami paper. I'm not going to um, do the actual Mamagami technique today. That's in a video, a couple videos back. I have a whole stack here that I'm going to use today. 
Um, you'll need some metallic markers if you want to rim your edges. You'll need some metallic paint. You'll need shaping. Shaping tools, or if you don't have that, you can use a crochet hook or any pen like this with a round tip that's hard and smooth. Um, and I think that's about it. If this doesn't dry, I have my T square here. And I'll use scissors to cut the ch charm shapes apart if necessary. Because I found that this really does become like fabric after you knead it. And I think that's why it doesn't dry as fast because it absorbs more moisture. And I'm just thinking. I think that's it. Yes, I think that's it. Oh, you'll need a punch to punch your little hole in your charm. Okay, I am not going to. Well, let me let me start with a preface. More things I've learned. If you um, watched the previous Mamagami videos. What impressed me was how after you do the magazines, you virtually lose the image and you just end up with form. <laughs> kind of like abstract. Well, that one's still you can tell. And I'm sure that you being above me you can still kind of make out the images more than I can because I'm closer. But when I began moving on to the magazines I'm like okay well what can I do with this? Once you glue them down completely you no longer have the tactile sensation so what's left that I can explore. So that led me to move on to visual texture and what I liked about the visual texture. And that was basically, there's that one. Look how vintage that looks. And it's, it's a window and a sofa and a table. I mean, maybe you can see it from higher up. But when you're this close, you just see form appearing. And I thought that was so cool that it almost becomes like a... Each little piece of paper almost becomes like a paintbrush. As you can see, there's what's left of my palette. <laughs> so I'm just going to move this one up where I went over it with my finger with gold acrylic. And I also did that on a lot of the charms. I'm not going to do that today because I don't want to stick my fingers in acrylic. But that's what I did on some of the charms. Some of them I left as is. Some of them I took my little metallic pen and did some calligraphy type things. Some I dipped this marker tip in gold paint and just made shapes. So when it gets to that point, you're going to want to do whatever you want. So I have all of these in a folder along with my other 
digital momogami and that's where they're going to stay for when I want to use them. So I began with, well, I wonder what would happen if I fused the image into a book page. Would the image come back? And yes, it kind of did. And I didn't like that. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't usually use magazines. I do like this technique because it definitely dulls the finish and it makes magazines more usable for me. But when I began to tear it and fuse it into the paper, this is what I came up with. And I really wasn't going for anything here. I just wanted to see what would happen if I fused it by running it through my Sizzix. And that's what happened. So then I'm like, okay, what else can I do with this? And that led to the tiles or the charms charms and flowers. So you can take any image, doesn't even matter, something like this. Almost didn't want to tear this out because this is the dream house, <laughs> my cabin in the woods. But anything like this, because once you do the momogami, you're just going to end up with forms and color. This was a sofa. I used part of that on some of the charms. This was something on a plate. I can't even remember what. <laughs> but I'm going to use that for something. So I really liked that this would be nice. This would be great because you're going to get all this color. And then here's another one where you're going to get more form because you have the windows and things like that. So that was those were the things that really fascinated me. That the visual texture and the um, you know it kind of looks like decaying leaves, cracked ice, um, crazing on China. It's just very visual texture and I really like that and I really like the fact that you're going to end up with colors and forms and then you can just apply them however you like <clears throat> but today I think I'm going to um, just tear some strips here and apply them in a more definite pattern. Across the page. And I'm not going to get too fussy here, just due to time's sake. And I'm not going to do the actual technique. So before, be sure to check both, both sides of your paper because you might end up with something more interesting on one side than the other. So I think I'm going to just apply this Across the page something like this 
and then I'll move on to the flowers. Hopefully that will be dry. And then I can cut it into the charms. Um, I kind of like Oh well, let me see if I have any more of this. Yeah. I'll try to use this on the bottom. Depends which way you tear. What kind of... If you tear one way, it's going to come off really straight. <laughs> if you tear the other way, it's going to be jagged. So I've kind of been tearing straight. And then if I get an image where it, it begins to look too obvious, I'll just glue something over it. Like in one of them, I got a clock or something, and I really didn't want to. I wanted to keep everything abstract, so I just glued another piece on top. And if you're wondering, this is the glue I use, Linaco Neutral pH Adhesive, and I just transfer it to another bottle. And then I'm going to use a little palette today or a little paper brush. Try to get this very thin so it dries faster. I'm just going to go across here in strips. quickly as I can. So people have been asking if I used starch or oil. I did not use either. I felt that that wasn't going to make any difference in whether the actual technique would work or not. And it didn't. And even playing around with this, your hands are going to get dirty again. So be prepared for that when you begin. When you do the actual momigami, your hands get covered with black ink. I began to see why I curated a bunch of videos of people who used it. I began to see why the one person took to using gloves because I I've been doing this all week and I've washed my hands so many times. My nails are getting so dry that they're actually breaking off. Just a spot there. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to get too artistic here. I took much more time applying shapes and 
paper to the top of mine. And you can do this <coughs> however you want. <coughs> I'm kind of running out of that color. Um, this will probably work. And I'm going to um, curate a couple more videos. Found an artist who uses Mamagami a lot. And since <clears throat> I think it's very interesting to learn the history and all of that. And she um, she goes into a lot of detail about the history. So I'm going to post those videos. And I found another one who seems authentic, as in Asian. And um, she used a very nice kneading technique that I thought you might find helpful. So again, if this if this doesn't dry fast enough and I can't put it through the guillotine without tearing, as in the video, not the last video, the one before where I made the button clips, if you try to punch this while it's wet, you're just going to tear the Mamagami paper and it's just going to slide off your page and that's another thing if you're you can use packaging a couple of these I used packaging and glue stick and then when I went to wet wet it um, The magazine just slid right off the page because it dissolved the glue. So you're going to have, want to sand that or use an acrylic medium to apply it if you're going to use packaging material, especially to the glossy side. The paper side that probably wouldn't have happened but I wanted to cover up the glossy side so that was almost a complete fail because I wanted to try watercolor on top of it because I wanted it to seep into all those little crevices and um, accentuate them and it didn't turn out as planned so that's what led to the gold because just running my finger over the top um, brought out the crackle texture. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Get this glue off my finger. 
can move on to the flower. Now the flowers, same with, you can't punch this. You can't punch this on its own. It, it's kind of like wax paper or tissue paper or paper that's too thin that you're trying to punch. You have to apply it to a zipper back. So that's what we're going to do. I'll probably just use this. Get a flower out of this. This, okay, I don't, don't mind if it's not totally stuck down. As you can see, kind of, in this one, the mamagami is coming apart from the book page a little bit. That I don't care because we're going to use real glue to put these together and it just gives a nicer little edge. So I'm just going to use glue stick for this. Get this down so I can get a few flowers to punch. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, that's pretty. Just want to make this punchable. And then we'll shape. Whoops, oh well, there's enough there. And you'll need two, two circles and your smaller circles, which I already have made there. Okay. See, look at my hands already, <laughs> just from going over this. So when you glue this down with a glue stick, you kind of don't totally lose the tactile, but it's no way near the other type of paper. I don't want to lose that, so going to put that in my little paint box. And if I didn't mention that, you'll need a couple punches unless you want to. Um, cut these circles out by hand. Okay, here's hoping. Okay, we got it. One, two, Let's see if I can get four out of here, I'm sure I can, three, four, okay. So get that. Get my shaping tool. So again, this is kind of like the button button clip. And the flowers from yesterday, you really can't, 
You really can't shape this like a paper flower, but because it's on a, you're applying it to paper. It gives you a little little um, stability where it will actually work. Okay, let me get a center. Something a little different. I'm just going to get a smaller stylus here. There you go. That's your first one. And you can rim the edge with gold if you desire. White paint, any color you choose. You can ink the edge. You can do whatever you choose. Remember, this is just. This is just a starting point for you to take it wherever you want to take it to do the charms you can tear your mamagami into little tiny pieces make a kaleidoscope effect you can do whatever you want as I'll be exploring this further myself. And that's why I'm going to share this one artist. She uses Mamagami a lot. And she also uses other Asian techniques that you might be interested in. Other Asian paper techniques. Which maybe in the future I'll try those as well. Because I just, I just love paper. Okay. There's two flowers. Okay, let's go back to. There's my little paint box. Where are we? 34. Wow. Here's my. Here's my paint box of my, my scraps of my digital Mamagami. I'm going to be doing something with those. And I'm going to be using as many of these as possible before I put all this away. I do not like having torn paper scraps all over the place. And I haven't been keeping up with... making something every every night so they're not here in the morning. Okay, this is, seems pretty dry. So, I'm going to attempt the guillotine. This one I also put a paper bead and I went with one by two inches mostly because 
I am going to die cut some of these, mostly because those are the only two punch size punches I have. I would prefer a one inch punch, but I don't have one. So I do have some one inch die cuts, so I'll be die cutting some different shapes. And the other reason is because when it gets too small, you're kind of losing everything. So I felt one by two inches was enough to get you to continue to see the form. Let me get some of these purple ones here. That you could continue to see the form and colors but still have something small, like a charm size. Okay, my guillotine is buried here. So, I just, these are, I already know these are four by six. So it was, one by two inches. Well, okay, I kind of meant to glue some more things on top of there, but that's okay. And then some of them, I forgot to mention this, some of them I went over with um, Mod Podge. So you can also do that if you want to seal them. Some of them I didn't. I liked, I liked both. So see that's glued down. You're not retaining any of that softness really. All you're left with is the visual texture. However, you could do like I did in my collage book and just glue around the edges. And then you'll still be left with the softness. This is just the basics. I'm not I'm not decorating. I might rim one or two with the pen here just to show you. But I don't want these don't want these to be too long. You're going to play around and do what you want anyway, so. <laughs> okay. So I have a corner punch here. That's what I did. The mini corner punch here. It makes three different corners. And that's what I used. And then I also have a 
three decorative corner punch, which is fabulous. I'll just do one like that in case you want to consider that. As I said, I'll be, I would like some more circle type shapes. So I'll be die cutting some of these as well. So there's another one. And then of course, took my little punch. Punched a hole. And then that needs glued, or no, that, that's a piece that came off. Which one can I bring here for you? This needs a repair already. Let's see. Needs a repair. So be a little more careful with the gluing than I was today. Okay. There. So I think that's enough to get you to see the basic technique. And I know that you're going to just explore this however you want to do it. And get the kind of forms and shapes that you want to achieve. So again, some some I glossed with my podge. Some I added more shapes, calligraphy. Get out your calligraphy pen. Make some freehand. I did several sets of these. Make some freehand. Um, calligraphy. I got my little Japanese book and I began copying letters from the book and that's all I did on my first ones. I'm not sure where you go. Yeah, I did three sets of these and some of them I didn't even punch out the hole yet. Oh, and by the way, all of these photos are going to be on the blog if you want to look more closely at them because all of this stuff doesn't really show up on video. You'll see it much better in a picture. Okay, 45. I don't want to be any longer than that. You get the idea? Go play, have fun. It's a very, very beautiful, beautiful um, technique for you to do what you would like to do. So thank you for your time, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.